Previously on the Mighty Mo, I depart the Missouri River headwaters on June 2nd in search of adventure and art. Morale remains high despite my fear of a nearby fugitive. I meet a puppy that will later be named Steve and become windbound on Upper Lake Hauser. I make it to the gates of the mountain's wilderness and take the time to paint. My name is Steve Snell and welcome to Adventure Art on the Mighty Mo, a painting show about paddling the entire Missouri River. Over the course of three months, I will paddle over 2,300 miles. I will live in a tent. I will look for adventure. I will paint a lot of paintings. This is Adventure Art on the Mighty Mo. Welcome to Bighorn, a primitive camp on the Upper Missouri Breaks National Monument, here in the Badlands section. It's day like four, I think, going through the National Monument. The first day was beautiful. The second and the third days were pretty intense. Oh, get out. Get off the water. I use mostly these two big brushes, a big round one and a big flat one. I use the flat one to like put in big washes for like skies or for water, but I mostly really just use this brush. What I like about it is that it helps put down quite a bit of color. I have a little bit of control, but not too much. Because what I found with this painting is that the more I try and control. The more I try and make this look like a photograph, the less interesting it is. It's not a photograph, it's a painting. And what it is, is a record of this time, this place, and this moment, and my perception of it. And I'm just trying to perceive it and capture that as honestly as I can. And that means looking and not making stuff up, just looking at the page, but really trying to look and correspond to this mark, to that paper, based off of what I see. And by doing that, it inherently becomes abstract. And sometimes you get lucky. Oh, something just bit me. That little fly. Ow, what the heck, I didn't do anything. Oh, so let's go back in time a little bit. It is a peaceful morning as I depart my idyllic canyon camp in the gates of the mountains wilderness. I paddle for the good part of a day and soon reach another lake. Holter Lake is comparatively small when compared with the others, but as with any lake on the mighty Mo, there is a dam that must be portaged. Portaging is one of my least favorite things to do. I do what must be done and make camp at a popular fishing access point below the dam. It is an opportunity to make another painting. This section of river is known for its blue ribbon trout fishing. Drift boats abound with folks fly fishing and I am careful to stay out of their way. The 
The water is clear, fast, shallow, and cold. Rapids are numerous, and I must pay attention to stay upright. I am making my way out of the mountains, and soon find myself in a high plateau, defined by farms and ranches. The Missouri River flows north for the first couple hundred miles, and even heads west for a bit of this section, forcing me even farther away from home in order to eventually float my way back. I am now about a week into my journey, and life on the river is becoming more and more routine. Good night. So I'm getting packed up here. Got the camp all broken down. I flip over my canoe, put it in the water, and I notice here at the bow, it looks to be like a little nest. I was like, I don't remember that, and I broke it up at this point. What rolls out? Another stowaway. I gotta get this guy somehow. He's in here, there he is. Poor guy, here. You're just scared, it's okay, hold on, hold on. Maybe a paddle. Go ahead and climb on. Go ahead. You got it. You got it. Yep. Oh, you had it. You got it. You got it. It's a little slippery. Oh, man. Here we go. Nope. Last time, this one should be a little easier. It's a little more flat. There you go. Got up. He's a big, big girl or boy. I don't know. You can get your fill. Here we go. Oh. Alright, I'm putting on the camera for this. Alright, well, about a half hour, 45 minutes later, I'm finally leaving the island. I soon reach the city of Great Falls and take advantage of hotel proximity to the Portage takeout for a much needed shower, bath, second shower, and pizza. It just felt good to have a night's sleep without the coyotes waking me up, or the beavers. However, the river calls, and the following day I catch a ride around the local five dams by River Angels Jim and Phyllis. They are kind river people. They have been portaging fellow paddlers for decades and I am grateful for their help and advice. It is a short paddle from the put-in at Carter's Ferry to Fort Benton, a historic river town that was once a fur trading post and the end of the line for steamboat traffic. It later became an army garrison and hang out for cowboys, outlaws, cattle rustlers, miners, gamblers, corrupt sheriffs and people just making their way toward Oregon and the Pacific Northwest. It was apparently a very dangerous place at the time, with criminal murder and vigilante justice a relatively common affair. Now, it has small town river charm, and there are free yellow bikes provided by the local Lions Club for visitors. The canoe camp is only a quick bike ride away from town, and I take a day to explore, rest, and paint. Ahead lies the Upper Missouri Breaks National Monument, a wild and remote badlands area, almost 600 square miles in size, that is administered by the Bureau of Land Management. Here, extraordinary geological formations define a landscape that can feel almost otherworldly at times. There is much history here and you can feel it. All right, so I'm uh, taking just a little bit of a break here in this coulee in the White Cliffs. I'm gonna try and make a watercolor painting, despite the wind. But hey, this is adventure art, right? Watch out for rattlesnakes. That's probably a rattlesnake hole. Very spectacular. And windy. Probably full of rattlesnakes.
of the White Cliffs, or a view of the Missouri River from the White Cliffs. Of course, I can do a little bit more, but um, I think this is done. It's done. All right. I'm trying to leave this little coulee here in the White Cliffs. Just made my painting. Getting back on the river. So I'm gonna keep rolling through the White Cliffs. Got a number of other stops today, I think. While Lewis and Clark were the first white people to document it in their journals, the native tribes long fished, hunted, and lived here. Specifically, the Blackfoot, Northern Cheyenne, Sioux, Assiniboine, Grovant, Crow, Plains Cree, and Plains Ojibwa. The native peoples were eventually removed by the U.S. government, and their land was parceled out and settled through the various Congressional Homestead Acts. However, the desert-like environment did not encourage many of the new immigrants to stay, and most agricultural operations didn't last. Cows are still here, though, and the Upper Missouri Breaks remains open to livestock crazy. There is no motorized boat traffic or cell phone service in this area, and anything brought in must be carried out, including one's poop. This is one of the most popular stretches of the river to paddle, and the BLM does what it can to maintain its natural beauty and character. Some of these gusts can just really make you pause. I haven't really painted much in the rain. But hey, this is adventure art. You gotta paint whatever the conditions uh, present. finish this painting and I better try and protect it before it gets any more uh, weatherized but I think it's pretty neat oh man pretty cool I'll take my finger this part's already kind of kind of indistinguishing what's a uh, river here and what's not but it'll paint right back on the river, just leaving Eagle Creek Campground, finishing my second painting. I have come to the Missouri Breaks, and specifically the White Cliffs area, with an agenda to paint. I have a romantic vision of painting some of the same formations that were famously documented in watercolor by the Swiss artist Karl Bodmer, who accompanied a German prince up the river in 1833. Coming some 30 years after the Lewis and Clark expedition, Bodmer's paintings depict a river without dams, reservoirs, wing dikes, and riprap. They show native peoples and their traditional way of life while on the verge of change and displacement. These works remain an important artifact of how life on the river was and serve as a major inspiration for my own river painting. Some of the most well-known of these images depict the Missouri breaks. However, I quickly learned that whatever my plans may be, the weather, and particularly the wind, will ultimately determine what I can and cannot do.
just whipped around like right there in the middle of the water and just disappeared and then I got hit with that blast and um, God I wasn't in the middle of that Behind me you see Signal Rock, at least I think that's what it's called, which is in a Carl Bodmer painting. I want to paint it. I feel like I could camp right there next to it, but it's only 3 o'clock and it's pouring down rain. I feel like I should just keep paddling. Looks like cows. The wind blows hard here, with some gusts topping 50 miles an hour, and I take shelter with other paddlers in a cabin windbreak at a place called Hole in the Wall. I get warm, paint from the shelter, and set out the following day despite the sustaining winds. All right, so I'm going for it. I've been waiting all day. This hasn't really cleared up much. Big wind gusts, and they're expecting even more later, so my plan is just to hug the right shore here, where there's a little bit less uh, white caps, and uh, try and be as safe as possible. This is not fun paddling, it's going to be a lot of work. Sorry Carl Bodmer, but I'm not going to get to stop and paint a lot of your places. I can barely maintain control of my canoe at times. It takes all of my strength to keep upright, and I pass many iconic rock formations featured in Bodmer's paintings along the way. Despite the frigid, hypothermic weather, I am in a constant state of awe from all that surrounds me. I am lucky to be here and figure I will paint when it's safe. The opportunity comes the following day. Cloud cover lifts, temperatures rise, and the winds retreat. The river feels as though it has been reborn, and I depart the White Cliffs region for that of the Badlands. Sagebrush dots the chalky brown hillsides, and the river takes on the color of earth. What was a formidable gauntlet just 24 hours ago now feels like a lazy, sun-soaked cruise. I will take my time here, Take my time and paint. <laughs> 